This week on the Baseline Podcast, Josh and I break down both the NFC and the AFC Championship game. We talk about the greatest collapse maybe in NFC Championship history with the Lions somehow giving up a 24-7 lead. And then we also talk about the Chiefs versus the Ravens. How did the Ravens not win this game? And what are the Chiefs doing to somehow go to another Super Bowl? All that and so much more coming up on the Baseline Podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Baseline Podcast. I'm Ben. That's Josh. And we are out here after a crazy weekend of football and of other things. I mean, there's other things going on, I'm sure. There's some other sports things happening. Of course, there was a lot of things going on because when is there ever a, a boring day of sports, Josh? I don't, I don't know the last time I remember a boring day of sports, but then again, I might not pay attention to the boring things, uh, but that is besides the point. Josh, how was your weekend, and um, did you do anything interesting this weekend? Let's see. Now, this weekend was my weekend of work, so I didn't get oh, to watch any boring. of the playoff games. I've only been able to read and hear from other people that watch them what happened. But outside of that, um, Monday night did a – I don't know if – how much you pay attention to American restaurants, but Applebee's has had a oh. promo for all you can eat boneless wings for Gosh. like the whole last month. And a bunch of us went and did that Monday and slammed three rounds. Dude, you're just going to like gain the gains, man. You're bulking out. Well, I got to, I got to get it all in while I can. Cause tomorrow I'm actually starting to cut for the next couple of months. I'm going to try to get 20, 25 pounds off. Josh is going to become skinny. That's what he's saying for all of you uh, noobs out there. He's just going to become skinny. It's basically become small becomes small um but no we like you said it uh for me it was kind of a, a boring weekend i guess not nothing too crazy but um i was thinking about this the other day josh and I, you can you can chime in on this it is truly like because i was the reason i mentioned like a quiet day of sports like i don't i really honestly don't remember you know growing up around sports when there was like a day in the national media where there wasn't a uh something going on in the sports that's crazy and I was just thinking about that. Like, I feel like even after the Super Bowl ends, then you have baseball. You know, so I think like right after the Super Bowl, you kind of have a, a calm period, but then you have college basketball and all that. Um, so I just, I don't know. I just thought it was very interesting uh, that uh, you know, sports never, never quit. It's like the city that never sleeps. It's the, it's the topic that never sleeps. And speaking of the topic that never sleeps, Josh, we had some great NFL games this weekend. Some good ones. They were. They. Uh... Not all of them were the results that I wanted from talking last week, but you were so confident they last happened. week. <laughs> I was I was confident in a 49ers win, although it was a much closer call than what I thought it would yes. be. But I was also confident that Baltimore would get the job done. Uh, I also found it amusing, Ben, that most of the Cleveland Browns fans and Pittsburgh Steelers fans I know were all rooting for the Baltimore Ravens, which just hurts me. Which that is how much hurts hatred. Me. That is how much hatred it, there is towards the Kansas City Chiefs right now. I mean, I division did all, rivals are pairing up to root I mean, I, for. I, I did other almost, rival. I did almost call the Super Bowl. I mean, I did pick the Lions; they choked, and uh, the Chiefs. You know, uh, they came away on top. So you see, I was close, but again, I'm just terrible at predicting. So I, I just don't count on myself to do well. That's what I would say. My updated picks now, I believe, are. Uh, where am I at? I went. Well, you went. I was five and five last week, so I guess yes. I'm six and six now. I'm just trash. That's what mine is. I've lost track at this point. <laughs> um, I know I got one right last week, so that's all that matters. But let's let's recap these games, Josh. Let's let's break it down. Where do you want to start? Let's start with the the forty nine not forty nine ers uh, Ravens and Chiefs game since that is the one that happened first. Should we talk um, about the, pregame before we before we get into the game? Should we talk about the pregame scuffle? Uh, the scuffle, yeah, because I'm that'll lead into another conversation. Yeah. So the scuffle beforehand, it's not really a scuffle. It's more of like a annoying. But more of a more of a taunting, annoying, you know, being immature, whatever. Um, we also saw in game the Chiefs doing all kinds yeah. of things like that. Um, we also saw some defensive pass interferences that weren't called. Yeah. Uh, granted, one of them was Lamar Jackson throwing in the triple coverage to Isaiah Likely. So it's like, what are you doing yeah. there, Lamar, first off? But we saw a lot of those kinds of things slide. And then we see Zay Flowers uh, get called for taunting, which just at that point, why are you calling that and none of the other stuff? So a lot of people are saying the refs, once again, it's really easy and to see yeah, what, Swift, man. which team the NFL really favors. Uh, even the crew going into the game uh, had the highest winning percentage for road teams 
Kansas City was the road team in this game. But I also am not going to pin this all on officiating because um, Zay Flowers did have a fumble at the goal line. I believe Lamar also had a turnover. So once again, it's like what we I said last week. You got to be near perfect, Percent, if not yeah. more than perfect, to beat Kansas City in the playoffs, which is crazy because Patrick Mahomes has been kind of average this postseason too. The Kansas yeah. City offense has kind of been in the middle of the pack when you look at yards and points per game this postseason. But the defense has been the second best next to Baltimore's, and they're getting things done. It's just it's just hard to beat Kansas City in the playoffs for some reason. They got him an extra gear to them. But I didn't think that Baltimore did anything to help their case either, given all the the taunts and I guess the the turnovers and stuff you want to throw out there. But the other thing too was this is the number one rushing offense in the country. And they and ran I the believe, ball 13 times. Correct. And I think only six of those were with their running backs actually. Yeah. So it just goes to show how important it is, I guess, to get the lead and uh, hold on to it if you're Baltimore. Yeah. But it's also like at the same time, that's your strengths. And Kane City's run defense you, isn't exactly locked down. Yeah. You knew this was going to go bad. Speaking of the scuffle that I want to talk about, you knew it was going to go bad when your kicker is getting his kicking tee and helmet sh- thrown, you know, five yards one way. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. On, I'm sure you've seen it by now. But if you're listening or watching us, this video basically came alight. I think it was after the game and or during the game or something like that. And basically, uh, I guess Justin Tucker has been doing this warm up for 12 years. Um, and basically he warms up from the end zone and he works his way back. And it so happened that Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, all of them were doing warmups at that location. And I guess Patrick asked him to move and he just kind of was like, okay, yeah, I can move stuff. But then Travis got involved and Travis being Travis decided just to be a jerk and just kind of like chuck things. And, and I guess supposedly Travis came out today as we're recording this saying that, well, every time that this, this stuff has happened, it's happened when we're in Baltimore. So it's I'm I'm trying to figure out which side I fall on because I'm like, I get it. he's like harmless. He's a kicker. He's just trying to practice kicks. But it's also like, dude, it's kind of like the unwritten rule that you just let the people have their warm-up space. So is he insisting that they also warm up in the end zone like that? And so they only run into this issue at Baltimore because both of them like to do that. I think maybe, but I think it's also the fact that I think he but he was kicking on the Kansas City Chiefs warm up side. I think that's what they're trying to, I think that's what the chiefs are saying. Like wouldn't mind it if it wasn't and like, I don't think they would have minded it if he was like two yards to the right. Right. Like he was just literally like right on the the point. So I don't know what it is. It's just stupid. It, it's dumb. It's like childish, but that's besides the point getting back to the game. I mean, that kind of, that kind of just for me started the whole Baltimore Ravens struggling when you saw that to start the game. And then I agree with you when you're, when you have a play where you get catch your own deflected pass because it was a terrible throw, and it just seemed the game from there just went it went so downhill. Like I felt like like Harbaugh came in, and the whole staff, and it was like let's just get as far away from what we can do as possible. And I just feel like the Ravens are never going to be able to be back on top until they figure out how to play in the playoffs, because this team is built to win a championship if they do it the right way. At the end of the day, like I. I still think there's a lot of teams in the AFC that if they are on the right game, they could beat the the Ravens. And it was proven, you know, the Chiefs didn't do anything spectacular. But also, Zay Flowers after the game saying that he crossed the goal line. I'm sorry, dude. I don't know what you're looking at and what you've been smoking, but you were about about a half yard from the goal line when that ball came out. Um, so I just, to me, it's just, I feel like, the Ravens didn't didn't help themselves by play calling. The defense didn't play great. And it just, I don't know. It just, it felt weird. Like Lamar just seemed off the whole game, but this is every time, man, this is like every year with the Ravens, they get, they have a great regular season. Everyone hypes them up. We all predict like this is the year. And then they just kind of fold at, at one point. This was the year that of all years to do oh, it too, for sure. because Justin Herbert injured out for season, Joe Burrow injured out for season, Deshaun Watson. Patrick Mahomes, has one of his worst statistical seasons. Deshaun Watson also injured. Um, just a lot of quarterbacks that uh, seem to suffer setbacks this year. And I don't know if you're ever going to get an opportunity like that again if you're Baltimore. Like, we've seen windows close in the NFL really quickly. Yeah. It, it's, but, it's tough. I, I just – I felt like – I don't know about you, Josh, but I just felt like it's 
Like they were scared to do what they've all they've done the whole year. I know they got behind, but that doesn't mean you just stop doing what you got what got you there. It's like they wanted to change their identity for one game. I thought too Lam- the way that Lamar has played this year, he's been a lot more involved in the throw game and hadn't exactly. run as much. So it's like he I felt really comfortable that if they did have to pass, they could get it done. Yeah. It just it it obviously didn't come to peace. But again, hats off to the Chiefs, man. Uh Andy Reid just knows how to win in the playoffs and this offense is not that great. I don't care what anybody tells you. This Chiefs offense is not that good. The defense is honestly not tremendous. They're they're average, but they just they in the playoffs they get it done every single year. Kelsey yeah, ended the day with eleven catches and a touchdown. So we haven't seen a game like that from him in a while. Yeah. And against the Baltimore defense of all defenses too. Yeah, and just unfortunately that ter- we have to deal with Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl, which is just going to be a oh gosh. I don't think I can handle that, to be honest with you. It's just annoying. That's sad. We'll see if she can even make it on the flight back, though. Let's just hope someone, like, delays the flight on accident, like, you know, in, like, Tokyo. Oh, no. Sorry. The I've been telling delayed. people there's a good chance that she'll just straight up cancel that show this in is, Tokyo this entirely is because she's canceled shows without refunds yes. in the past. Th- this is my question for you, Josh. Is it real, yes or no? No. Okay, thank you. I'm glad it's, this it seemed off the whole time. Yeah. It just doesn't seem real at all. Like even the emotion after the game, it, she didn't seem like she seemed more like fake excited. Like, so like, Oh my word, you, you did amazing. It just didn't feel, it feels like it's more for that clout. And, and honestly, Travis, I mean, if you hear the whole story, like Travis just shot his shot, but it wasn't like a romantic thing. It was just kind of like, Hey, you want to, you want to date me? You Honestly, know, uh, it seems like Travis Kelsey just made a deal with Hollywood. Like, hey, you can date one of one of ours if you're willing to go ahead and get on Pfizer and get on Bud Light and all this other yeah. stuff, and we'll we'll pay you and like reward you if you want to like be our spokesperson. And he was like, okay. Because the thing is, like, if you listen to Jason and Travis, I actually like Jason a lot. Uh, their podcast, like Travis, just he he started annoying me more and more, especially after he started dating Taylor, and he just really starts annoying me. Because Jay, I love Jason. I think Jason's like a goal. He's just a treasure. He's an American treasure. <laughs> and but we, if you ever know the past, though, you always know that Travis was always the one that was causing trouble, and Jason's had to save him a lot of times. And again, I'm not saying like again, I don't know their people's personal lives, but it's just very obvious. It it, it just it's almost too good. You know what I'm saying? Like it's almost too perfect of what's happening, and for it to all connect like the way it is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, we'll get into uh, maybe early thoughts on the Super Bowl matchup after we talk about the mm-hmm. NFC matchup. So I'll I'll go ahead and put my thoughts on hold for that. But let's talk about Detroit and San Enough Francisco. Enough with Taylor Swift. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Um, if you uh, at one point in this game in the third quarter had to go and like use the bathroom and come back, there's a really good chance that you were just <laughs> like, wait, did you guys like change the game yeah, or what, what happened? What's going on? <laughs> Because man, you you go up twenty four to seven in the NFL, you got to be feeling yeah. really good. <laughs> also, about dude, the situation uh, you're in right now. I was also thinking like you maybe could have went to the restroom and came back and like, wait, is that the Falcons? Um, sorry, I'm sorry, Falcons. That's fans. where my I'm mind so went after I found out the who won the game. Oh, I was getting goodness, texts dude. at work about like, dude, Detroit's gonna pull this off, and I seen the score. I was like, okay, yeah. And then I get off my shift and I'm like waking up the next morning to see the final score. I'm like, wow. It was just, it, it didn't it. Sorry, it didn't it feel like kind of like that. Like I don't know the the first half. It I mean it just don't ask like me the, if it felt like because no, I didn't get to watch. That's it. true. But when I was I was watching like bits and parts and then the highlights the next day, but it really to me felt like the 49ers were just kind of asleep, and it's like something at halftime. I don't know what who punched who. I don't know who you know said something but they will they like a sleeping giant like got awoke and it was it was kind of one of those crazy things and i'll be honest with you josh this and and campbell said it best in the locker room but this might have been the lions only true shot unless they can keep this team together unless they can do another run like this next year this might have been that one shot that detroit the city of detroit needed to have that that championship uh, banner, I I don't know I I had no I mentioned earlier that windows can close pretty quickly but I think Detroit's core is very young and going to be together for at least and a they couple kept their more OC. seasons. 
And yes, Ben Johnson is back. Also, um, it's because he was also asking for an absurd amount of money, if you heard. I didn't know what he was asking yeah, for. He but was asking ridiculous. The dude must be a great play caller with all the fourth downs he's been able to convert on, but oh just wasn't gosh. able to convert on that one. Oh, I wonder who's going to bring that up. I knew Josh was going to bring this up because this is such a controversial thing. It is. And on I guess one end, you're like, this is what Dan Campbell has done all year. This yeah. is what makes us great. This is honestly why we've been able to win some games. And on the other end, it's like, well, going for fourth down as many times as you have is stupid. And this is just the time that it finally cost you on the biggest stage of all things. Yeah. Like you, you basically got finally got caught. You got got yeah. finally for, for your incompetence. It's like the Miami hurricanes when they, uh, instead of taking a kneel down in that, was it the North Carolina game yeah. or Georgia, oh, Georgia Tech, Tech? It was Georgia, Georgia Tech. Tech. Yeah. They didn't take the kneel down and they fumbled and then Georgia Tech ended up winning the game. And Miami fans are like, that's what Mario has done all season long. And it's like, and it finally cost you. So yeah, I think a regular season game, there's a lot, obviously a lot less at stake than there is in the playoffs. Maybe he doesn't make the field go anyway. We're looking at like a 47 yard kick. And I know the Buffalo Bills missed a 44 yarder that could have sent that game to overtime the week before. So nothing's a guarantee, but it's just like, I think in you got to though. Right, so the win wasn't going to be a factor. And you don't want to leave, like, your identity, like what we were talking about with the Baltimore Ravens, what they did. But still, like, I don't think this is exactly leaving your identity. It's just more of, like, a we're playing to win the game right now. Yeah, I don't know. I, fourth and three also is a lot different than, like, a fourth and one. People don't realize, like, as someone who, who's an offensive coordinator over here, like, people don't realize how long three yards is. Three yards is a long – like, that's a long way. Like if you think about it in a game sense, right? It doesn't seem like that much. You're like, oh, second and three, it's easy. No. And when a team knows what you're about to do, right? And I think mm -hmm. I think Dan Campbell, like he took a risk, right? I don't know if it was I and this is a great question that someone brought up was like, did he feel the pressure of the city of Detroit? Like he felt like he had to do this for Detroit, like to go out and get a win and not just keep playing this back and forth game. But also I go back to like halftime. Did they all just decide not to show up in the second half? Did they all think it was over? Because we had guys waving at halftime. It's like, dude, the game's not finished until there's four quarters done. Like, they should have locked this game up. There, There's no reason we even have to be talking about this, Josh. We shouldn't even be talking about this fourth down play because it shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have mattered. They shouldn't have gotten in that situation, no. correct. They should have been up. They should have just locked it down, said, hey, we're going to put eight in the box. We're going to put seven in the box and say, we're, we're going to force you to do something. And I just, to me... It felt like the Lions, they went into halftime thinking, we got this, we're going to be a Super Bowl team. And it's like, and to be honest, if they win this game, I like their chances against the Chiefs. I really do. And so it's like, to me, it's like, you have to you have to lock down mentally. Not just not just schematically, but you need to lock down mentally. And I just, it, it looked like a lot of the guys just kind of went through the motions in the second half until the fourth quarter. And they're like, oh crap, we got to play this game. Um you know, Nick Bosa made that that offensive line look two sacks. Yeah, like like children. Um, and and it just it was it was little stupid mistakes that the Lions kept making over and over again. And people keep saying, like, oh, you can't blame Dan Campbell completely. I'm like, no, he's the head coach. It starts and it ends with the head coach. And if you can't make those tough decisions, like, okay, people might say the same thing. Oh, he went for a field goal and they missed the field goal. Right, they would be saying the same thing, but just in a different version. But at least if you attempt the field goal, you're taking that chance to, hey, we're going to tie it if we do this. What happens if you get that first down? We don't know what happens. Right after that, they could have been anything, but at least you had that chance to to obviously kick that field goal. And to me, I just think this might have been the best chance if the Lions won to win the Super Bowl because I think they do have a really good team. Um, but again, hats off to the 49ers. Brock Purdy has has once again, if he has not proved already, he has proved he is a top 10, 15 quarterback, probably top 15 quarterback in the league. And for all those that doubted him, his size, his, his whatever, he, he, his mindset, um, man, that team, that team is very good, and their defense is really good. And I think I this gonna, team, yeah. yeah. I just, Brock it's, Purdy, it's awesome. this is, that's his second comeback in the playoffs yes. so far. Uh, also, maybe some of uh, that attitude of we already got this in the bag is just an experience on Detroit's end. It yeah, is a younger course. team. They haven't been here before. And the 49ers team, on the other hand, was in this game last year. And, I mean, unfortunately didn't get to finish it with a quarterback because of all the injuries that they had to deal with. And 
the rules about being able to maintain a quarterback and Josh Johnson got hurt in that game and Purdy tried, but it just wasn't there. Also Debo Samuel, we weren't sure how involved he'd be. Nine targets, caught eight of them, had 89 yards. Mm -hmm. McCaffrey gets two touchdowns and 90 yards on the ground. I already mentioned Bosa had the two sacks. And speaking of halftime too, I don't know if you saw the clip of George Kittle talking on the sideline. He's like, I told the guys, I can't wait to in post game when they're, you know, doing the interviews and stuff about the comeback to say they had us in the first half, not going to lie. Yeah, I to me, I I, I just I love to see I that love, pancake that I think oh, Kittle yeah, it dude. was Kittle on Aiden Kittle, Hutchinson. Kittle is the most Iowa style tight end in the oh, NFL yeah. right now. Like Laporte is great, but Kittle is like the most like physical, doesn't care. Out of all the tight ends you talk about, like yeah. Travis Kelsey, Sam Laporta, he uh, Mark Andrews, Najoku, Kittle is the toughest one on the line. Oh, if I needed sure. if I needed him to block a guy. If I needed my tight end to block, I'd feel the best if I had him. Yeah. And the thing was, he wasn't really a, a, a key focus in the Iowa offense when he was in college. He only had like 200, 300 yards in like one season. Like he never got more than like that because he wasn't a, a factor. But man, that man has proven to be a great pickup by the 49ers. And, um, you know, people keep saying Travis Kelsey's the best in the NFL. He might be, but might all be around, the best pass but catching, all around, running routes. Stuff Kittle, like that. Kittle and Najoku are up there all around because I think Najoku is a very underrated blocker. Um, and I think that's that's one thing that both those guys play a big hand in. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just it's kind of cool to see, you know, what this 49ers team is doing. Excited to see what obviously the Lions are in the future. I mean, sh sorry, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know you're you're probably wishing you're, but I mean. Dude, if you're a Lions fan, to see your team, what, a couple quarters away from the Super Bowl, um, it's like a Browns fan, man. If the Browns were in that same situation, like, yeah, I'd be mad we didn't make the Super Bowl. But I'd also be like, man, we made it to the AFC Championship game. So, for me, I, I think it's just – it's really cool to see the story. And, I and I, again, even with this botchery of, of maybe you can call it that if you want, Dan Campbell has done a phenomenal job with the Lions. And uh, I still believe that. For sure. Yeah, same thoughts as, like – as a Detroit fan, it probably hurts right now, but this is honestly the only season they really had anything to cheer about, honestly. They've been able to root for individual players like Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson and Matt Stafford, setting records the way they have. But well, think about it. Since meaningful games, this is the only time they've really played in them. In 16 years, they went from 0-16 to a NFC Championship game. Like that, mm -hmm. that, is, that is really cool to see. It's a great story, and I love it. Hopefully the Browns sure. are there next year. Yeah. Next week, we can talk more about uh, the Super Bowl matchup yes. itself, but I will just go ahead and throw out right now that uh, early lines for the game, San Francisco is being uh, looked at as a two-point favorite right now. The over-unders, 47 and It is and a in a dome. It is in a dome. We're in a dome. Yep. Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Because, dear Lord, they wouldn't want to put it in, like, Green Bay and have it just a snowy Super Bowl. Why would we do that? <laughs> right. That'd be phenomenal. Uh, we've ha we have had some uh some crazy outdoor conditions, uh some rain and I think some cold and stuff. They've I'm trying to remember some that I've seen. I think they know. just should put it in like Mexico City, just like one time. Just be like, screw it. Just put Mexico it in Mexico like City a, one time. Just one time. Um, yeah that that is the craziness. But I don't know if you saw. I mean, obviously the reason why we're not talking about this week is you have the Pro Bowl coming up this week, and uh, C.J. Stroud, our guy. He is making this Pro Bowl <laughs> as an alternate because guys just don't show up because it's the game. It's not even a game anymore, which I understand if you just skip it. I, I would understand. I would yeah. totally understand why you would skip it. Like, it's like, wh why am I playing dodgeball? It's I, mm -hmm. I'm here to play football. Goofy. But besides the point, I still say the yeah. MLB All-Star game is the best and no one can argue with me on that at all. Uh, but it speaking, would, but yeah. speaking of speaking of coaching changes, we we didn't want to talk about a couple coach changes in the NFL because some things have happened, Josh, and some that you like, and some that maybe we're still a little bit wait and see. Yeah, so uh, let's start off with uh, the head coaching hire that we've seen now. Um, McDonald from yes. the Ravens, their defensive coordinator, is thirty six years old, the youngest head coach in the NFL. Yes, thirty six years old, going to take over at Seattle. Interesting um, hire. The dude has been basically in the Baltimore Ravens organization his whole coaching career, honestly. Except one year. He's been, yeah, one year he was at Michigan with uh, Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh. That, was his, that was his first time play calling, and then he goes yeah. up to 
coach with John again as their defensive coordinator. Meanwhile, Jesse Minner goes over to Michigan. It's so weird, dude. It's like has been in the Baltimore factory, Ravens man. organization. Yeah, it's yeah. There's factory. been a lot of a lot of overlap there with John and Jim. Uh, Jesse Minner is actually going off. Now, to now top. that's the question. What are they going to do? The Chargers are they just going to like trade coaches? The Chargers and Ravens? They're going to be like, hey, I'll take this one. You take that one. Yeah, like, I feel like uh, that's what's going to happen now. I don't know, but anyway, back to McDonald. Yeah, taking over as a head coach now. Only called plays for two years, honestly, between a uh, college and pro career. And yeah, the youngest head coach in the NFL now at thirty six. Better get some veteran. Guys. He better get some veteran guys on the offensive side of the ball. He's got to get some veteran coaches that know what they're doing. Because I, I think it's going to be a lot for him to manage, especially when he hasn't really worked on the offensive side of the ball at all, which is the, the yeah. scary part. I don't I don't question anything defensively. I mean, if he's been in yeah. with the Ravens as long as he has and coached different position groups over there, I feel pretty good about his knowledge of defensive yeah. football. It's just going to be, yeah, uh, the offense, getting some good play calls I've heard Kellen there. Moore. I've heard Kellen Moore as a name, but I don't Didn't know. Didn't Kellen Moore get hired? Oh, yeah, he did. He did get by Philly. But that was a name that was getting thrown around as an OC candidate for whoever took the job, mm-hmm. which would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other OCs that are not on the market now for that job are Arthur Smith. Did not see that coming. Did not see that coming. And it's the Over it's a Pittsburgh. weird hire. I've heard a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers fans. I have friends. They're Steelers fans. And a lot of them, yeah, I do have friends, people. Um, <laughs> Steelers fans, they're mixed bag. I've heard some that like it and some that are like, why? Why can't we get an explosive guy that can just change the offense completely? But I also think that Tomlin's like, I want to stick with my identity. But then I also see how Tomlin should have went maybe a little more spicy and said, hey, I really want to flash it so that I can keep my job past this next year because I really do believe this is he's on a hot seat this year. Like he has to do something because it's been so long since there's really been any success. Yeah, I don't think they've won a playoff game since 2015 or 16. Yeah. So who cares if you're never below 500 if you're not I know playing in any meaningful games at the end of the season. But I didn't even think Arthur Smith would be on the – the uh, consideration for offensive coordinator. I would have thought he'd want to get another headshot at, or another shot at a head coaching job. But the way that he called plays in Tennessee made Ryan Tannehill look like a pro bowler. Loves running first with uh, guys like Derrick Henry. And then over in Atlanta had some of the top rushing offenses with uh, like Tyler Algier and Bijan Robinson over there. And I think that kind of play really fits what you think of yeah. when you think of Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Uh, especially right now, since they don't have a quarterback that you can really count on. What do you but mean? Maybe. He, uh, I mean, you can they, you can throw either one of the three out there, and you're probably going to get the same results That's regardless. True. But I'm sure he'll make either of them look better than what they really are, while also at the same time playing the tough uh, Pittsburgh style of football that we're used to seeing. So I love that hire. If I would have thought of Arthur Smith on the market, I'd have been like Cleveland, go and get this guy. Especially since we also love running the football. As yeah. much as we do in Cleveland, even though Kevin Stefanski is probably ultimately going to be calling the plays again. But the guy that we hired, Ben, is a guy that got fired, and then his offense got better after he was fired. Uh, yeah. Ken Dorsey, yeah. no stranger to Cleveland. Four He's Brown. been on the roster before as a quarterback on the depth chart, but now he is going to be the offensive yeah. quarter next season yeah. over in Cleveland. We've had some interesting uh, assistant hires with uh, right. Tommy Reese coming up to coach tight ends, and now we got Ken Dorsey as the offensive coordinator. Um, I don't know what capacity he'll be in for – drawing up plays and stuff like that but at least right now i'm not really a fan of it i i'm mixed feelings because I, again i think that you if you take this year out of it he's done a lot they they really a lot of people credit him for developing um allen and for really helping him as a qb coach and you know the offense wasn't terrible the first you know the kind of the the first go around but i to me, it's just one of those where like there's so many more not not flashy hires, but there's so many guys that I think just give you a little bit more when it comes to it. To me, it feels like the Browns are in the same situation as the as the Buckeyes, the Ohio State Buckeyes, where Ryan Day needed to become a CEO, so he hires a guy that he can then become a CEO and let Bill O'Brien take the offense. And I feel like the Browns are in the situation where Stefanski's realizing that too. Like I need to be a CEO of this team. And I just feel like maybe you could have got someone else, maybe a Kellen Moore, maybe, you know, some of these other guys that are out there that maybe just give you maybe a slight bit more of uh, kind of that style that you're looking for um, flashiness. But again, I, I, it just, it's confusing to me that that's, I guess that's the biggest thing I'm trying to say is that to me, I just, I get it. He knows the Cleveland, you know, Cleveland atmosphere and stuff, but to me, it's like, 
Deuce Daly might be a better offensive coordinator than than what we what we just got. So I again I just don't really get the the fit. Um but I am hoping that maybe we can maybe he'll surprise us and, and it will be really, really good. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't think there was any other big uh NFL coaching changes other no, than those, right? No, not really, no, no. I know the Browns signed a D line coach, but I actually don't even know who it is. So we're still waiting to um see what happens with uh our offensive line coach depending on where uh, his oh, brother just ends stay up. just stay yeah just just stay where you are it's fine pay him what he wants guys pay him what he wants yeah uh i don't think i mean not a not a new hire but uh houston texans offensive coordinator is also gonna stay with which is huge texans i think for cj stroud CJ that stroud. is huge yep. that is huge for cj Bobby you know, Slowick, I think. Maybe after, his yeah, name. maybe next year. Like if he leaves next year, I, I still don't have an issue. I think CJ Shaw will be fine. I think you just need two years for CJ to really feel the system. And I think he's gonna be uh, you know, very good as well next year. Very good. Yeah, they're already well ahead of schedule, as we oh, for sure said over there in Houston. So also also I do want to touch on what did you feel of Joe Flacco saying that DeMar Hamlin needed the uh comeback of the player player of the year trophy? That just bothered me. I think he was just being politically correct. Yeah, saying, he was trying. You no know, quarterback speech. I I do believe though that people are going away from Demar Hamlin, but I also don't think it's going to be Flacco anymore. I think it's going to be Mayfield. I think it's going to start shifting towards Mayfield and less towards Flacco. I think that's just my gut feeling. I heard somebody I can't remember what show it was say. I'm pretty sure sure more people have died and come back to life than got and up off their couch and led a team to the playoffs oh on like a five game win streak. <laughs> It's like, oh, yes. Media. <laughs> oh, media. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Yeah. Shoot, man. Um, yeah, I think that'll uh, wrap up some NFL stuff. So we got some interesting basketball topics uh, to come oh, up here and geez. talk about, yeah. too. Basketball, we Josh, we're talking about basketball? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. We're about um, basketball. Speaking of basketball, um, before we get to like NBA, uh, Ohio State looks like they're Don't in the same boat with, with Chris Holtman no. as they have been uh, last year too. They start off really good, beating up it's... on some bad teams, and you think it's going to be different, and then you get into like your more meaningful games, and it looks like you're just going to lose out and miss on March Madness for the second year in a row. But you extended him recently, so you're kind of <laughs> stuck. Yeah, um, if you guys are watching on video, Ben's Ben's face I think describes the fan base perfectly right now. Mm. You want to be good at basketball just like you are at football, but I don't. It's just something with Holtman, man. Dude, I don't know what it is. I th- I thought he had a really solid recruiting dude, class too he, last cycle. Like I'm speechless because like five, you know, four years ago it was like looking great, like they they had what they needed, and and again I just this is the two biggest issues I see. One, he recruits six foot eight guys, six foot seven guys. Dude, I look on the Big Ten rosters. I look at like Northwestern or even Nebraska. They all have like three dudes that are like seven foot tall. Like, I don't understand why this philosophy for Ohio State ever since Thad Mata left or even at the end of Thad Mata's career was like, we're only recruiting guys that are six nine. Like, there's one dude over six foot eight on the roster right now. And it's Opara and it's Okpara, and he's not even a threat really inside at all. So, to me, that philosophy is so dumb, and I w- I will never understand it as a as a basketball guy. I mean, dang, when you have recruited the seven footers like Greg Odin and BJ Mullins and Costa Kafus and stuff yeah. like that, they've they've all panned out pretty good. I feel like. Yeah, and so to me, like, yeah, I know you want to get like the the you know the Sullingers. I'm like, yeah, but he was a he was a freak. He was six eight, and he could do everything with the ball. All right, you're not going to get that every time. But to me. I'll be honest with you, Josh. The reason why I was like, you know, fake crying is because it's so frustrating because we see this every year. And like, I, I was even talking with one of my friends, like, I'm not even shocked. Like, I, mm-hmm. most people would be shocked. I was like, you, when they started whatever it was, I think it was like 11 and four or whatever it was, 11 and three or whatever they started as. I was like, you know what? Great. We got to 10 wins, but we all know what's going to happen. Because the thing is, we know that Holtman at the beginning of the year, they they beat everyone they should. They usually have a surprise win here and there. And then they get to Big Ten play, and it's like they forget that Big Ten play is physical. Like, there's nothing against Northwestern, but when you lose to Northwestern twice, you're losing to teams like Nebraska. You're losing to seeing some of these teams that maybe aren't the top-notch teams. To me, it's so frustrating. Um, Mm -hmm. I I just – look, and and I know we signed him an extension, but look, look who we brought in as AD. Now, the AD doesn't take over until July, I believe, so it's kind of be kind of weird, but – 
look, he's fired guys that are owed 90 million. So I believe that the Holtman is hot. This seat is so hot right now, mainly because of the fan base. We saw what they did to Ryan Day, right? Like, mm-hmm. and Ryan Day is still alive, but Holtman's done this now repeated years. And it's not like Ryan Day where he's making it to a big game. You know, he's not making it to the, the NCAA tournament. And I don't think they will this year. And to me, it's frustrating because he can recruit. Holtman is a very good recruiter. He can he can connect with these kids, these parents, and and the fan bases. And like I know he can. The problem is, it just feels like they they get to a certain point when it's like they're not battle tested because he only rotates seven or eight guys into the team. You know, he's not playing nine, ten deep. Why, why is why has Michigan State been good for so many years? Why is Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky because they play nine to ten dudes every game? They are deep, and they guys, even if they're freshmen, they're playing out there. They screw up. Who cares? They throw them out there. Um, and to me, I just think that Ohio State really needs to hit the reset button maybe because the women's program's got to figure it out. You know, they're top 10 in the country. They haven't figured it out. Um, the football team's got to figure it out. You know, all these other sports are doing really well, and for some reason the men's basketball team has just – and again, we've never been a, a, mat, a big basketball program because obviously football dominates at Ohio State. But it's still the idea that, like, you are a top-tier team in a very good conference – and you can't you can't win more than two games through your first nine games. Or sorry, I know this, ten, you know that yeah. just doesn't make sense. I know, the, like on the women's side, this had more to do with Caitlin Clark, but they sold out the Schottenstein Center yeah. when Ohio State played Iowa. When has yeah. the men's team done that recently? They haven't. And I don't think that the last time they did that was probably what during the the Greg Oden years. Like it's been so long. Maybe a little bit after that. Maybe like during Evan Turner's time too. But still, it's, it's, that was but it's the squad. idea is like. That's still what twelve years ago, thirteen years ago. A long time ago. The, yeah, that's the scary part. And again, Maybe. so, to, yeah, to counter what you said, I, I just think that my personal opinion is that you need to change the scenery. That's that's my personal opinion. Again, I'm I'm not saying that he deserves to be fired. I but I do believe that you, your results speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. And when you're getting a top tier class and you're pulling out a thirteen and seven record, and you're you're what three and seven in conference, to me that's frustrating. Yeah. Uh, it looks like my Tar Heels are getting back on their feet too. They've yeah, they're must ranked be nice. three as of this week, but we lost to Georgia Tech the other Which day. Which you shouldn't have lost to Georgia Tech. Should not have lost to Georgia Tech. That's on rank. That's that's inexcusable. They've had some solid wins over like Clemson and Hey, at least you're um, winning the conference. Yeah, uh, the losses too have been besides Georgia Tech. They've lost to Villanova. They've lost to uh, Kentucky um, and Oklahoma. So like at least ranked teams, but. At the top of the poll right now, Ben, UConn is still dominating the typical big dogs. Uh, Purdue's at number two. Houston's uh, at four behind us and Tennessee at five. No really big surprises, honestly. No. I mean, uh, I know that uh, that what eighth, the eighth team lost last night, too, to uh, Kansas. They lost to – who did they lose to? No, it wasn't Kansas that lost. Can't Tennessee remember. lost to South Ten- Carolina. Yeah. South Carolina, by the way, is 18-3, and three and they were not ranked. I do not know how that team's not ranked because that team is very good. The, yeah, I, they're I mean, when you get to the, the bottom, when you get to the bottom of the top twenty-five, you're getting to like six and seven lost teams right now. Yeah, and I don't know how they're not ranked. It, got, it's yeah. very weird. Exactly. Yeah, the the March Madness landscape. Uh, oh, dude, it's revving up, man. We're gonna have we're gonna be, dude in like we a are month. Revving up, dude, man. Yeah, month, we're about we're to be in, a, oh. we're gonna be in February next episode. Yes, which means actually, which means this comes out in February. So, which means that in a month. Josh and I will be attempting, like we do every year, our March Madness bracket, brackets. which we mm-hmm. both know is just going to be atrocious because <laughs> I, we just suck at it. And yeah. Rebecca beat both of us last year, so that just yeah. that just is more depressing. <laughs> yeah, but that's enough college basketball talk yes. for today. There was some interesting stuff in pro basketball. We just talked about hey the Chris Cavs Bolton. though. We can talk about the Cavs though because the Cavs. They're getting back their full roster as of today. They're getting back. Garland's going to be back today, which means they have their full roster back, and they're still in fourth place. Still got that four seed, yeah. I love it. But we were just talking about Chris Holtman doing uh, less with more, I guess you could say, given how he's recruited. And Doc Rivers, after Milwaukee Bucks fired their coach, which made no sense at all to me after just a couple seasons. Dude, so dumb. And they're the two seed, mind you. It's like David Blatt thing all over again. The David Blatt thing, yeah. Cleveland kind of did that before too. But then they go and replace him with Doc Rivers, who has done way less with maybe the most out of his whole Dude, career. He's he got one ring. He's lost so the most conference finals. 
He's blown the most three two leads. He's probably blown the most three one leads. Did he's, nothing. Did nothing. In Philly did nothing in L.A. Yep. Did nothing with the Clippers with all that talent. Did nothing with Philly with all that talent. Probably should have done more in Boston with all the talent they had. To be honest, that was just like the first real big three yeah. that got formed organically, and they won because of that mostly. But I don't know why Doc Rivers keeps getting these shots, man. I don't think Bucks fans are all too. He happy wasn't about that. He wasn't that great on TV either. So no. So. Maybe uh, maybe the NBA did and the network some favors and stuff. Like, we'll get him out of the booth. It's fine. It's just like that guy Bucks didn't deserve – that him. guy just didn't deserve to get fired. Like, he did nothing wrong. <laughs> like, he's just winning games. Like, are we at the point now where coaching is not about winning games anymore? It's just about like, oh, we don't feel right, so we're going to fire you. Like, really? That's where we're at now? Yeah, got me. I wish I knew some Bucks fans that I could have talked to to be like, what's the reason? Yeah. It's hard to find the Bucks fans, you know, you know, up there and all the way up there in Milwaukee. They're one of those, yeah, they're one of those teams that honestly probably should have had a solid bandwagon by now, but I don't know. Nope. Any. Nope. I know people that are Celtics fans. I know people that are only in uh, Greece. Lakers fans. Only I, in Greece, they like the Bucks. Yeah, they got a reason to. That's true. They got a reason to. Did you also see the Thanos Anakukupo, whatever his name is? Giannis, so Giannis Antetokounmpo? Brother, yeah, Giannis's brother, oh. Thanos. Thon, he got so. he got who's played by the way he's averaging zero point eight points had three first play three starting lineup votes for the All Star game and he started it's like the Huntley thing for the Baltimore Ravens all over again he got three votes to be in this I'm like seriously people are we really doing this again yeah yeah I mean if you're you're a popular enough name you can you can definitely get some votes to NBA All Star we're gonna see some uh some new faces All Star weekend we found out too with uh. Some of the WNBA stars, Sabrina oh, Ionescu, gosh, oh, is going to take on Steph Curry, Ben, in a three-point shootout. And you want to even frustrate about this? And I posted about this on our story. Okay. They're not even using the same ball. Like, if you're going to – like, Are, I'm assuming that Sabrina is going to shoot with the WNBA ball from the WNBA and the, length. Yes, exactly. And Steph so is going to shoot point? with the NBA ball over the So what's NBA the length. point? Yeah. It, it's not a competition if, anymore. If, if your whole point was to prove that uh, at least the shooting – is the same in the WNBA as it is in the NBA game. I think I you got to go the same Steph shoot the there, same then. ball. Let Steph shoot. He could shoot the, from the women's line. I like, yeah. If we were looking for like to like pound for pound, like prove equality or whatever, and I don't know what your opinion of Steph is, Ben. I know people will talk about how what a competitor he is and how many rings he's won, but just the way that his wife like goes and talks about him, I feel like he might be that guy that could be like, oh yes, women, uh, Sabrina beat me. Oh no, I can't believe I couldn't beat her. She's so good. It's just the WNBA athletes are just as good as the NBA ones, guys. You gotta yeah. watch their you gotta watch their league now. And it's also, it's not like he's shooting the ball great this year. He's shooting like thirty four percent from three. It's not like he's having a great phenomenal year shooting the ball either. Um, I Steph has crushed in these competitions before. Yes, I, dude. This is this is my biggest problem, Josh, and I've said it, and I'll say it a thousand times. The we got to take politicizing sports out of sports. Does that make sense? Like we can't. Like I ten years ago, I'd be fine with this because it wasn't. It wouldn't be about proving a point. But I feel like the underlining thing is like to prove a point. Whether Steph will actually try hard, I don't know. You know, like, what what's going to happen? Oh, Sabrina, you know, if she wins, you know you're going to have the outcry of people saying, oh, well, women are just as good as men. It's like... And then they also will proceed to never watch the WNBA just like they never did before. Exactly. And this <laughs> is the other thing. I, I truly believe, and I believe this is another sport, I think you'll agree with me. If you really believe they're equal value, put I want you to put women basketball players against NBA top-tier players. You tell me how that's going to turn out. That's all You've I want to seen- know. We've seen men in women's sports and how they dominate over there, but we don't see any of the women coming over the huh. men's. It's very interesting isn't it? for that. Huh. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. They don't want to get elbowed in the face by a 290 pound man. <laughs> is that just, is that just, you'd be like, well, look at Brittany Griner. I'm like, dude, Shaq would have ate, ate her for lunch and th- spit her out. Like that's just Victor that's... Wembyama with his sub 200. No, not sub 200. That's yeah, he's 210. He's 210. That's right. But Chet Holmgren, I'll say since he's the sub 200 would have his way. It's just it, to me, it's just really frustrating because I feel like now, once again, the NBA All Star Game has become more of a joke, and it's become more of a we want to show the world that hey, we we're woke and we want to be a part of the woke crowd, 
like, dude, what, what happened to when I was a kid and I got to turn on the NBA all-star game and I got to see a three point contest and then a skills competition and then a great dunk contest. I don't see that anymore. It's all about, I, I get to see celebrities who suck at basketball, play basketball for a whole night. I don't need to watch <laughs> And then you that. get to see them judge the dunk contest. Yes, I don't need this. What, what happened to when, you know, Shaq did the judging and, and Alonzo Mourning and like some of these guys that played years ago, like get to prove, you know, get to show that it, to me, it's also the dunk contest is always with a bunch of dudes I've never heard of. Like, I don't want to watch a dunk contest that has guys that I've never heard of. That's not fun for me. I want to see yeah. the Vince Carters. I want to see the LeBron James. I want to see the dudes that I know are freaks and that can truly light it up. By the way, I don't know where you read the stuff stat, but he's shooting 40% from three right now. So maybe that well, was, he was like he, a he was shooting for a couple low. Yeah, weeks. He was, he was shooting better. low. Yeah. Okay. And he's not doing great though. Like his, his overall like a uh, plus minus shooting percentage is bad. Just not where yeah. he normally is. And again, I, I, I think, thought, I the thought Warriors are bad was... by the way. The Warriors are also terrible this year. Yeah. Initially, I thought that the contest was a fun idea, except they're not doing this the same. No, they're not. The same length, it's so, so it's like, yeah, I don't really care about this then. Like that's not as a competition much... anymore. Competition's yeah. fair. A competition by rule is a fair game that gives you fair op- You know, a fair chance to win. That's all that fair. we will prove is that Sabrina is better in her league than Steph is in his league. I guess that's what we're proving. I guess that makes her the best player ever. Not that, not that like she's a better player than no, this Steph. One, this it's one just that she's better in her league. Okay, then why don't we Which have a dunk? I don't really know what that means. Why don't we have a dunk contest between Sabrina and uh, LeBron James? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Forgot. Yeah. Yeah. That's not. You'll have to possible, sub Brittany in that one since she can dunk. Oh, but, but yeah, but, oh, what about a windmill dunk? Oh, yeah. Forgot. Brittany will not throw down any windmills. Exactly. But she can at least point. dunk, so you gotta at least let. Oh, okay, dunk let's in that let's competition. not let's not. Okay, she can dunk, but I've seen dunks in women's games that is just basically grab the rim as the ball's already in the hoop. Have you noticed yes. that they always let the ball? It's, in it's the all hoop the and it's all the two the hand. Rim. Yeah, it's all the two hand. It's not like palming and like reaching back and slamming. No, it down it's like they let the ball in the hoop first or... and then they grab. Like they and don't they actually them. do it at okay. once. It's just very sad. You know how it is. You know how you know that is because the rim bounces really bad. It'll like bounce, oh, yeah, I know like you ferocious. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know, in high school when you tried to dunk, and you know, all of us tried to dunk, and you just like barely grabbed the rim, and it felt cool. That's basically what it is. Well, let's end the show on a high note, Ben. We've gotten yes, all of our gripes it. about basketball out of the way. Vlad Junior is on the cover of the new MLB The Show. That's true. I think that uh, I like the move. Uh, the show has been getting a lot more of the fun players in the league, like yes, uh, Jazz Chisholm was on the cover the year before, and Shohei Otani before that. Um, personally, I haven't played the show since like the one from 08 when Ryan Howard was on the cover. I, I played two years ago. I played too much. Okay. I, st- I still love, uh, seeing who the cover athletes are and all that, but what do you think of the Vlad as the I, cover? I athlete? like it. I like it. I mean, I, you know, I don't believe in the curse thing, but I, to me, I think you have to have someone who's going to be willing to like represent it in a fun way. I thought Joe Maurer back in 06, 07, like I think Joe Maurer being on the cover was awesome. Like those ads are still so iconic. Oh yeah. Um, you know, that's just, it's great. I, I think the problem I have it with it now is just that they, they don't make it as like a big deal, like fun. Like they don't have those fun ads that just it's goofy. Um, now if you look at the game, the game has not really improved over Like it's improved little by little, but it's like, it's basically what you know having a rewrapped game. That's why I mainly play strategy games now because why do I buy a new Madden <laughs> every day or a new will be the show? But in general, I think it gives baseball fans you know someone exciting to to get you know they get the game they get someone exciting on the cover. Um, my still my favorite is you know obviously Ken Griffey that they did like the the veteran or like the Hall of Fame edition. You had Ken Griffey Jr. on it a couple mm. years ago. You know those are really cool. Um, but again, yeah, I, I mean, I still miss like some of the old classic, uh, you know, baseball games that, you know, you had, you know, oh, you had baseball tonight and you would have like their whole thing. You know, I miss the classic, classic games. baseball games like the yeah. bigs and yeah. MVP baseball. Exactly. And even backyard baseball. Well, even it'll be slugfest. Actually, I do have uh, backyard baseball over here. Uh, it's it's here to play whenever I get bored and I just had to pull up backyard hmm. baseball. But no, I again, I, I think it's really fun. It's cool. Um, I think. It's it's really fascinating to see, like I wonder what it goes through a, a person's head. You know, maybe they played the game their whole life and then they get the call like, "Hey, would you be the cover athlete?" And you're like, "Well, duh." 
you know, yeah. like, like, what do you say? Like, Oh no, sorry. I don't want to be the cover athlete. You know, like that just would be so weird, but yeah. Um, it's, it's awesome to see again. Maybe they could have went somewhere else. Like the only one I was thinking would be really cool to have on the cover would be, um, Corbin Carroll. I think that would have been a really cool one to have. That'd be a cool really one. Cool. I don't know if Ronald Acuna too, has been on the cover yet either. He has not. I don't believe. I, have, I don't yeah. believe he has not. But I think he is more of like he's actually more reserved than people realize. He's not really in a like a true outgoing kind of guy. Yeah, probably the the coolest cover that I can remember is this one right here that uh to oh, with dude, the bat that flip. Was, that that was one nasty. just was hard. That no, that hard. was nasty. But this is the other one I was thinking of, which would be really cool. I think is if you would have had a. Miguel Cabrera this year, or maybe they will do like a later a edition. Miguel Cabrera edition. Yeah, that would be really cool. You know, a Miguel Cabrera with. Yeah, you know, I think I think Miggy should get treatment like that. Three thousand hits, five hundred home runs, oh, triple for sure. crowns, this has been all my, stars. This is what I thought. It's like every year you should do like a legend, not a legend edition, but I think there should be four people on the. You know, like this year you maybe could have Joey Votto, you could have uh, Miguel Cabrera. Some of the guys are at the end of their career or just retired, and you have those like the four dudes that are on the the cover, which would be really cool. Hmm. yeah maybe maybe we'll come up with our own mlb game and and do that and and take on the show yes of course an improved because game what are we going to be year. the announcers is that what it's going to be we're going to be the announcers in the game is yeah we'll we'll be? uh we'll go ahead and uh use the ai the technology audio. to come up with like the same five <laughs> the five phrases actions oh yeah. my it's been hit a mile it's like yeah, swings and a miss he's like oh he spun around like a helicopter <laughs> on that for just a regular swing and miss <laughs> Oh my, that ball was hit sharply and it's a dribbler down to the third baseline. It's like, dude, yeah. that was not a sharply hit. Yeah, we, we couldn't come up with enough reactions. So this I'm sorry, we couldn't this. record more than 100 lines. It's like, it's not that hard. <laughs> just have them sit one day. And or to be honest, I've always said, why don't you just record a normal broadcast? There you have all the lines you need. It's Inject just every normal. single broadcast from every single 162 exactly. games for all the teams into it. Perfect. Oh, like, man. I want to hear like the Tom Brenneman calls. From like the Reds game, like and this one, and I'm a man of faith, Reds. but oh, Castellanos, <laughs> give me that call in the MLB the show, no, man. I said Marty, not Tom. Difference. Oh, sorry, Marty's sorry. the dad. I heard Brennan, and that's where my no. head went. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying: if Marty Brennan was in it, and you had, and this one belongs to the Reds, and then you have the the White Sox. What was his one? And it's what was the White Sox guy? He used to do. uh I do not know the White Sox, but some other famous ones would be like Vin Scully for the Dodgers and Harry Carey for the Cubs. Yes. Get me Tom Hamilton from Cleveland on here too, man. Yeah, I even like if you did the White Sox, it's like, uh, and this one, it was like going, 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 gone. You know, just things like that that just give a little flavor, you know. But who cares? Josh and I don't really play video games that much. I only play strategy games now because my hand-eye coordination sucks. And I can't keep up with the new games, um, just like you know all the other ones. But Josh, I think uh, I think that's a, that's a show. It's a little lighter today on rat. the show, a little lighter on the day on the show. But that's okay because next week we got a big preview coming up next week. Mm -hmm. So um, keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for obviously the Pro Bowl this weekend. Again, here in probably the next month you're going to have March Madness. Here in the next less than a month you're going to have the first mock draft. So we're going to have a lot of things that we're going to talk about, which will, I think will interest different people. So please let your friends and family, if they like a certain thing, maybe they don't like football, then when we talk about basketball, they can join in, right? Or baseball or whatever it might be. Pitchers and catchers report in less than 12 days. So there's a lot of things happening and it's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait to talk about how the Guardians and the Reds will probably finish last for some reason because it's just the way it's going to go this year. But uh, oh, that man. is that is going to be a great spring coming up. But um, yeah. If you've enjoyed this episode on the of the podcast on YouTube, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Let us know that you are enjoying this amazing episode and Josh's amazing smile and everything he brings to the show when it comes to his joyous face and look. We are truly the face of radio. Um, and um, and if you loved listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, then go ahead and share that link with friends and family. Give us a five star rating because I truly have a five star voice. Um. It's a terrible joke. Um. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Go watch some uh, Pro Bowl games, whatever they're called nowadays. Pro Bowl games. Whatever they're called, I don't know. Uh, but enjoy some time with friends and family. And until next time, we'll see ya. <laughs>